The Department of Public Health and Human Services is pleased to bring you Aging Horizons. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, Fraud, Legal Issues, Veterans Benefits and Caregiving. Aging Horizons is a program dedicated to inform and prepare Montanans on these timely issues, making a difference to you and your loved ones. Here now is today's program host. Today on Aging Horizons, we are going to be talking about something so important to Montana drivers, winter driving. We're going to be talking with Mike Anderson, who's with the Department of Administration, and he's going to cover some really important tips for how to get your car ready for winter, how to drive on the ice, and then what to do in the event that you become stranded. You are not going to win and miss these important tips all about winter driving, so stay tuned to Aging Horizons. I think the most pleasant surprise when we turned 65 and signed up for Medicare Part B was finding out about our Welcome to Medicare preventive visit. It was free and it gave us the opportunity to visit with our doctors and establish a plan for our health going forward. They reviewed our medical history, measured our height, weight, blood pressure, and counseled us on other risk factors. To learn more about Medicare's free or low-cost preventive and wellness benefits, call your local SHIP counselor at 800-551-3191. I mentioned it's free, right? Twice. This is Bill. He just received his new Medicare card and is following some simple rules to protect himself from fraud. He knows to never give out his Medicare, Social Security, or bank number over the phone. And this is Nancy. She knows that to detect any problems, she always reads her Medicare Summary Notice or Medicare Advantage EOB to make sure the billing is correct. Both Bill and Nancy know that anything suspicious can be reported to Montana SMP at 1-800-551-3191. Receiving help for Ella has been life-changing and the best word for it is relief. I was the therapist, I was the aide, and I couldn't be the mom because I, emotionally you're just to your wits end, you're trying to survive. I provide care for the Harrises, specifically their daughter Ella. Respite care is extremely challenging, but the rewards that you receive from it are a hundred times more than working with a child that doesn't have special needs. Once they get something, it's everything. It's a celebrate. You, ce you celebrate. You don't just enjoy those moments. You celebrate every moment that you get that you guided them to that next step. Respite. It's okay to need it. It's okay to want it. Will you provide it? Call 800-224-6034 or visit respite.mt.gov. It went from survival to enjoying life and being able to be a mom again. Brought to you by the Montana Broadcasters and this station. Welcome to Aging Horizons, brought to you by the Department of Public Health and Human Services. I'm your host, Katie Lovell. And today we're speaking with Mike Anderson, who's with the Department of Administration. He's a loss prevention specialist, and he's going to be talking to something that all Montanans need to know a little bit about, and that's winter driving. Mike, thank you so much for being with us today. Good morning, Katie. Thank this you. is such an important topic, and I know the first snowstorm, it feels like everyone sort of forgets a little bit about mm -hmm. winter driving, and in Montana, winter driving can be really any month of the year, it feels <laughs> like. Yes, we've had snow in July. I know, absolutely. Yeah. One of the things I think people sort of forget about each year is getting that car ready ahead of the first snowstorm. So what are some of the things that we really need to think about as we prepare for winter? Okay, so in, when, when the leaves start to turn, it's time to start looking at your car and getting it ready for winter. Sure. Uh, one of the biggest things is tires. There are several different types of tires. You have summer tires, all season tires, and you also have winter tires. And so whichever ones that you have, you want to go down and check them, for, check the air pressure. As the temperatures outside go down, so does the pressure in your tires. Sure. So you want to have those checked, uh, but you also want to have everything else on your car checked. Uh, change the oil, the radiator, uh, just, just a general, if you can take it to a shop, if you can do it yourself, that's fine too. Sure. Uh, but just check those things, make sure the fluid levels are right, that the uh, uh, antifreeze is, is good for winter, uh, those sorts of things, and that, that will help you uh, when things do get cold. Absolutely. Um, Mike, what type of, we talked a little bit about there being multiple types of tires. What, is there a, a guideline for what to use for your car? Where do you find that information? Well, the, the size uh, for the car is on the driver's door. Sure. Okay. Uh, but in the winter time, I use uh, winter tires. They're sure. made out of a softer rubber. Okay. Uh, and they grip the ice really well. 
but the problem with those is like today we have uh, no snow on the road. Mm -hmm. The my winter tires are are, are uh, wearing out quickly. Oh sure. You know because yeah. there's no snow because yeah. they're a softer rubber. Um, and so what I have to do is I put those on in the winter, but then in the spring I put my all season tires back on. Yeah. And then in the fall I change them again. And so it can get kind of expensive. What I recommend if you want to do that is to buy another set of wheels and have the winter tires mounted uh, and then you can just you can change them at home. Sure, you can much just, easier that way. Yeah, absolutely and a lot cheaper. Yeah, absolutely. And so. So when we think about the things that we're going to need in our car in winter as opposed to in the spring or in the summer, what are the, some of the things that people forget that they need to throw back in the car? Well, most people don't put anything in their car. Sure. Right? And so I have a kit with me today, and we'll go through that a little bit later. Sure. But some of the things that you want to have in there, first of all, is clothing. Mm -hmm. Have your heavy coat. Even if it's a nice day like today, yeah. have that winter coat with you. Have your gloves. Have your scarf. Have your hat. Um, you know, uh, snow pants. Uh, you can put all of this. What I do is I put it in a big tote. Sure. And that way I can throw it in my trunk. And if I take my wife's car, we put it in that. If I take my truck, I put it in my truck. Uh, there's some other things in there. A uh, tool kit that I threw together. Just a, uh, just a small tool kit. It's amazing what you can do with just a few tools uh, and a little bit of knowledge to get yourself going. Sure. I'm not saying you need to repair the car in the field, but it's enough to get you back to town. Sure. Yeah. So that you're not stranded. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that I always forget to put back in my car is the ice scraper. <laughs> I take it out every spring because my boys use it as a sword. And then the first day of fall, I'm like, oh my gosh, where <laughs> is that thing? <laughs> it is so tough. You know, um, one of the things that I always throw in my car is an extra set of clothes for anybody that's going to be in the car with me, like oh. my boys or my husband, because he never has a coat. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a great idea, especially with kids. Yeah. Because uh, my grandchildren are wearing shorts this time Absolutely. of year and no coat. And I tell them every time, what are you doing, you know? And, you know, it's just what they do. So, yeah, that's a great idea. And then, Mike, one of the things I wanted to talk about is I know in Montana um, there are roads that close in the fall. So when yes. we're planning our trips, how do folks know, you know, how to check the weather on the roads that make sure roads are open, things like that? MDT has okay. a really good website. Uh, you can go, uh, they have a, a mobile app that you can sure. put on your smartphone. Uh, it's called uh, the MDT Travel Info app. Mm -hmm. And what it does when you activate it, it will locate you on the map and it'll show you all the roads around you. Yeah. Uh, it'll say whether they're open, closed, uh, dry, wet, snowy, uh, construction, uh, accidents. Uh, and so, yeah, the. Uh, it's a really good thing to have and it will keep you informed of what's in front of you because when you travel in the winter in Montana you need to plan it out. Yeah. I mean it, it might be a beautiful day here in Helena mm -hmm. but it might be the storm of the century in Billings. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so you need to you need to look at that before you go. Yeah, especially if you're going to go anywhere near Elk Park. I don't think I've ever seen worse <laughs> roads than Elk Park, Montana. They're right. always bad. Yeah, that app is so good. I have it on my phone. I use it okay. all the time. So important. Yep. Is there anything else that folks can really need to think about as far as um, you know, planning for their trips for winter that we just want to make sure folks know. Take your phone charger. Sure. Take your medications. Oh, good one. Right. Um, take clothing, uh, take a blanket. Oh, yeah. um, uh, why I'd say to take a blanket is if you have to get out and work on your car or you have to uh, change a tire or if you have to put on tire chains because you're stuck, you need a, a barrier between you and the snow. Sure. Okay, no, like m many people in Montana wear blue jeans, Yeah. right? And so if you get your blue jeans wet, what does that do out in the cold? It's so cold. Yeah. It'll wick the heat right out of your body. And you got to be thinking about hypothermia all the time. Absolutely. All right, Mike, when we get back, I want to talk a little bit about what to actually do when you're driving on the ice. Okay. So make sure you stay tuned. We're going to talk about the tips that you can use when you're actually driving on the ice and the snow here in Montana in the winter. With as many as 1 in 10 Americans at risk for Alzheimer's or some other form of dementia, 
Chances are someone you know and love will receive that diagnosis. When that happens, you may well feel devastated, but know that you are not alone. Help is available. You don't have to face dementia by yourself. Call the free 24-7 Alzheimer's Association helpline, 800-272-3900, for guidance and support. It's been 27 years. I never thought I'd still be smoking, but here I am, COPD and all. I'm about to have a granddaughter. There's so much to show her, but I'm scared I won't be able to keep up like I used to. I kind of gave up on myself on quitting. But it's different now. I want to be here for her and for my daughter. Every generation produces heroes. Men and women who step forward to defend our country in time of need, no matter the personal cost to themselves. And though we can never fully repay them, we can make sure they have access to low-cost, long-term care when they need it. That's what Montana's Veterans Homes are all about. If you've got a hero in need in your family, call us. We can help. Welcome back to Aging Horizons. Today we're speaking with Mike Anderson and he's giving us all those very important tips about winter driving. So Mike, we talked a little bit about getting our cars ready for winter. Now let's talk about getting ourselves and our driving skills ready for winter. What are some of the mistakes that people make when winter driving? Well, the first mistake is that first day in the fall when it snows and we get a little ice on the ground, mm -hmm. people continue to drive like it's summer. Sure. And I got to tell you, Katie, I like to stay home that day. Me too. <laughs> because um, everybody's driving way too fast. Yeah. They're driving, uh, they're turning, they're changing lanes like it's summertime, and they end up in the median or they end up in the ditch. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I just like to stay home that day because I know it takes about a week uh, for most people. Some people, it takes a couple of weeks. <laughs> Some people honestly never really <laughs> right, yeah. catch on. Um, but it's uh, winter driving is all about traction and sure. that's why we talked about uh, tires to yeah. begin with because the winter tires give you better traction mm -hmm. but the thing with driving on ice is you have to do it more intentionally you have to do it more gradually lane changes um, uh, turning a corner you have to be just more you have to maintain that traction between your tires and that road sure so you're gonna need to do everything a little bit slower a little bit running. slower and speed is huge sure. uh, because on ice it could take you up to 10 times as far to stop as it does on a dry road Absolutely. and people that's something that people don't really realize either and I think one of the things that people forget is the road can be dry and then it can be icy a second later absolutely like between here and Butte or mm -hmm. between here and Great Falls when you get into the canyons, yeah. um, some of the spots never see any sun. Mm -hmm. You can be driving on a dry road and come around a corner and it's solid ice. Yeah, it's absolutely terrifying. One of the things that I think people have the hardest time with is that turning, those curves. What are some of the tips that we can use when going around a curve or making a turn? Again, just slow down. Sure. Yep, just slow down. Make it, don't, um, don't put any input to the wheel quickly. Sure. Because any time you steer quickly or if you brake or you accelerate excessively, you lose that traction. And once you lost the traction, the car goes wherever it wants to go. Absolutely. You're no longer in control. That's the scary part for me. I hate that part. Right. <laughs> when we are actually in a skid, we've started to skid, we did the brake too hard, what do we do? Well, if you're going down the road and you find yourself sideways, mm -hmm. The first thing you want to do is let your foot off the gas. Okay. And the second thing you want to do, and probably the hardest thing you'll ever do in your life, do not hit the brake. Okay. Right? That's, yeah. that's what your instincts tell you. Sure. Right? When you get in trouble, hit that brake. 
Well, in this instance, if you're sliding sideways and you hit the brake, the car is going to go wherever it wants to go. Absolutely. Um, but you can maintain control if you maintain control of yourself. No gas, no brake. Look at where you want to go. Let's say you're going down the road this way, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden your car is this way. Look at where you want to be and turn the wheel to get there. To get back to where you want to go. Yep. That makes sense. Yep. And I will tell you this. Uh, skid recovery is a skill. And you can actually go out and practice it. Find a parking lot that's vacant or, you know, and put your car in a skid and figure out how to recover from that. Uh, that's really good for teenagers, too. Absolutely. You know, and like you were saying, uh, you, you grew up uh, on a 73 car, you yeah. know, and, and learning how to drive that. Because every car has a particular feel to it mm -hmm. just before it goes out of control. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. you should do that with each car in your household. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I know my, I drive a Jeep and that is handled so much differently than my husband's truck does when we start right. to get that little bit of squirrely in the back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Jeeps like to go in circles. Mm -hmm. They do. <laughs> they do. Uh, what about vi visibility? Is there anything that we can do to help ourselves out with visibility when we're doing, uh, when we're driving in the winter? Well, yes. When you first come out and, and it's snowed, sure. uh, you want to get a good a brush, you know, like yeah. this. Uh, this one actually extends, uh, so this is good for a truck because yeah. it's long. Um, but you want to make sure that you get all of the snow off of all of your windows mm -hmm. before you go because you've got to be able to see, right? One of the issues is if you if you get your car warmed up and it's still snowing, sometimes you get going down the road, the the snow will melt onto the wipers yeah. and then refreeze. Sure. Well, the the cure for that is to shut the heater off. Okay. Okay. You can you can turn the temperature down or you can move it from a defrost to heater, uh, but turn that down. Let the windshield cool off. Sure. Okay, most people do just the opposite. Yep, crank that heat right back they up. They try and crank yeah. the heat up, they put the fan motor up, and trying to, to melt that ice, that just makes it worse. Sure, absolutely. I know you see those people that are driving down the, the road and they've cleared just enough for their little face, <laughs> and it's like, you're going to hit something. I, I call them porthole drivers. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. My sister yeah. was one of those in high school. She never made time to clear off the windows. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the most important uh, tips that I was ever given was you need to plan so much extra time for winter driving. You need to leave earlier. You need to know that it's going to take you longer to get to where you're going. Absolutely. Um, if you're planning a short trip or a long trip, um, know that it's going to be at least 20, 30 percent more time. Absolutely. That is so important. Um, thank you for those wonderful tips. When mm -hmm. we get back, I want to talk about what to do if you're stranded. Okay. So th thank you for staying tuned. We've wa learned a little bit about what to do to help you drive safer on the road, but there is going to be an instance or two where we get stuck, maybe out of our, con our control, but we need to know what to do to keep ourselves safe in the vehicle. So make sure you stay tuned because we're going to get all that good information when we come back. You've probably seen some big name celebrities on your TV lately talking about all the Medicare benefits you're missing out on. But the insurance companies who are paying for these ads may be pushing benefits not available in Montana. Fortunately, help is available from a friendly state health insurance assistance program counselor who can help you sort it all out. It's free and we screen everyone for eligibility regardless of your zip code. It's Montanans helping Montanans. Call today. Today, class, we'll be discussing the term ombudsman, a word we borrowed from the Swedes and never gave back. Say you're a resident or you have a loved one in long-term care. Now, what do you do if you're not happy with the care and services you receive? You call your long-term care ombudsman, of course. Your ombudsman is available to support you and your rights. An advocate on your behalf could be the ticket. This is your home. If you have questions, the numbers right there below me have all the answers. Class dismissed. I was diagnosed with diabetes in 1992 and I went into denial. It made me angry. I was a professional chef and it, I didn't want to change my eating style. It took me a long time to get serious about managing my health. 
My perspective changed from resentment to one of loving my body, the container for my spirit. Getting help from my diabetes educator supported my goals of improved self-care. I want to feel good and have a great life. My diabetes educator helps me do this. A decade of Montana fourth graders on Energy Share. Robbie Holman reminds us that even during the chilliest Montana winters, our homes don't have to be cold, not if we energy share the love. And Emma Bergman knows who to call when the cost of heating your home starts to put a chill on your family. Emma says, when winter is in the air, it's time to care with Energy Share. Energy Share is not a government program. It's neighbors helping neighbors who face energy emergencies the Montana way. Call or visit our website today. Thanks, Energy Share, for helping people in need. Welcome back to Aging Horizons. Today we've been speaking all about winter driving. So we've told you a little bit about how to get your car ready. We've told you a little bit about how to drive on the snow and ice. And now we're going to talk about what to do if you do get stuck in the snow. Mike, thank you so much for this information. Mm -hmm. I know that this is one of the things that has always scared me as a mom of boys, is that what are they going to do if they do get stuck? How can we help prepare ourselves for that situation? Well, first of all, be prepared before you go. Sure. We talked in the last session about uh, knowing what the road conditions are, knowing what weather is coming in. Yeah. Be prepared before you go. But that also means have the right things with you, which is gloves and the coats and everything we talked about. But also you can have like a toolkit. Sure. Just a, a very... Uh, very small, uh, just some basic tools, Okay. Um, pliers, uh, there's a flashlight in here. It's amazing to me what you can do uh, with just a little bit of knowledge and just some basic tools to get yourself going again. Absolutely. Let's say that you hit a deer and your fender's hanging off. Mm -hmm. You can use a bungee cord or a piece of wire or something like that to hook that up so that you can at least get back to town. Absolutely. Right? Um, one other thing uh, that you should have with you is a good shovel. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Because if you do get stuck, uh, they make these in plastic also. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend the plastic because what happens to plastic in the cold? Yeah, it, gets, it cracks and breaks it right breaks, away. It breaks, right? Yeah. So I spent a couple of extra dollars sure. and I got this which is a very good yeah. shovel yeah. and so that could that could get you out if you slide into the ditch this may be able to help you sure yeah. uh, one thing that you want to do if you are stranded is stay with the vehicle okay okay I was a, a firefighter paramedic for 24 years and been to all kinds of different crashes and winter rescues and the thing is if you leave your vehicle I can't find you. Absolutely. I can always find your vehicle. Sure. You know? So stay with your vehicle. That's yeah. critically important. Everybody, you always hear the story that I walked or tried to walk yeah. back to that house that I passed a quarter mile back. Right. It wasn't a quarter mile. It was five miles. Yeah. And you're not going to make it. Yeah, especially right? if you're not dressed for the weather. Absolutely. Yeah. And Even if you are, yeah. stay with your vehicle and only run your vehicle 15 minutes out of every hour. Okay. Okay, because you don't know how long you're going to be stranded. Sure. And I don't know how much fuel you have on board when you do get stranded. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have to ration that out. Okay, and then when the car is running, take your shovel and make sure that it's clear around the exhaust pipe. Absolutely. You don't want that backing up you into the car. You don't want that backing up into the car. Yeah. And so another thing you want to do is keep your window down three to four inches. Okay. A couple of reasons for that. It will circulate fresh air into the car. Sure. But it'll also help you hear if there's any oncoming traffic. Oh, Because yeah. if somebody's coming down the road, you want to get out and flag them down. Sure. You want to get help. their attention somehow. Yeah. Right? And so, uh, so that's a good thing. Absolutely. Um, what else should we talk about? What's in this one? This metal can here. This that you brought. metal can. This is a, a survival kit that I came up with. This is a uh, candle. Okay. This particular candle candle will uh, give you heat and light for about two days. Wow. You can use the top of this for a for a hot pad. And this is just a paint can, right? Yep. Great. Just a paint can. I got matches in here. I also have some food in here. Okay. You should always carry 
some food with you, energy bars. Uh, if you're going on a trip, you can cook some, uh, bake some cookies, some breads, things like that, take yep. them with you. Uh, hand warmers. Oh, These are yeah. chemical hand warmers. These things are cheap. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, you get a whole case of these for like six bucks. Yep. Yeah. And have them with you. What they do, they'll last forever. You mix up the um, uh, the chemicals in them, and it give you about six hours of heat. That's amazing. Yeah. And so probably the most important piece of this little kit is the can itself. Okay. If you didn't buy a shovel, you can actually use this for a shovel. Sure. But very important is you can get out of the car, get put snow in it, use your candle, and melt the snow. Sure, because we don't want to just be eating the snow. Right. Because right. that can lower your core body temperature, right? Absolutely. Okay. You want to make sure, I don't know that you necessarily need to try and boil it. Sure. But you need to get it at least to room temp. Sure. Before you ingest it. Yeah. Because like you say, if you drink 40 degree water, that will wick the heat right out of absolutely, your body again. Absolutely. Hypothermia. Got to yeah. be thinking about that all the time. Yeah. And you have the two sets of gloves here. Why do we have, why do we need to carry the both sets? Well, I will tell you. These are my work gloves. Okay. These are my winter gloves for okay. warmth. If I have to get out of the vehicle and change a tire or put on chains, I put these on. And the reason is, if you see the, the, the palm of this, it's sticky. Sure. And uh, even when it gets wet, I can, I can handle tools, I can put the tire on, I can do whatever. But, and I don't care if these get wet. Sure. Right? Because as soon as I get done doing what I'm going to do, I take these off and I put on my good warm mm -hmm. dry gloves. Yeah. Because honestly, if I use these to change a tire and I get them wet, they're no good to me. They're no good anymore. Yep, yeah. they're no good. So uh, there's just a lot of different things, um, you know, and there's good information online. We have obviously the online class that people can attend, um, you know, so. One of the things I learned in your class is I am a lady who loves her heels, but I always carry a pair of boots in my car in the winter in case I ever get stuck because I don't want to be trying to push my car out in stilettos. Right. Not a good not a good look right. for me or anyone else. Yeah. Well, this was so helpful. I really, um, you know, I give these um, emergency kits I learned about in your class to all the mm. new drivers in my life because I just don't want them to be out there without something like that. So thank you for this information. So helpful. You're absolutely welcome. And thank you for staying with us today. I hope that you learned some really important winter driving tips and the most important of which is make sure you plan ahead and make sure you give yourself extra time because you're going to need extra time for those roads, extra time to slow down, and even extra time to get a blast the parking lots. Make sure that you carry uh, some sand with you to worry about the traction in the parking lots and slow down out there because we care about you and we want you to stay safe. So thank you so much for staying tuned to Aging Horizon. Special thanks to the Department of Public Health and Human Services for their continued support. Hosts on Aging Horizons are program specialists at the Montana Office on Aging. Production facilities provided by Video Express Productions. For more information about Aging Horizons, call the Department of Public Health and Human Services toll-free at 800-332-2272.